guys welcome back to a brand new slay and shade this is a series where i share my opinions on other youtubers and brands and it's just my personal thoughts i do not hate anyone except for ivan Mo moody from the bands five finger death punch moto greeter and ghost machine um this just like the rich video is a little hard because I'm a fan of NYX, or I really was. So if anything, this is coming from a place of like love, confusion, disappointment, you know, and uh, we're going to get right into it. Everything I've used on my face so far and things I forgot forget to mention, I'm going to just put in the description box so that I can get into the video quickly. And uh, today, surprise, surprise, I'm using the Tati Beauty palette. My husband purchased this for me for my birthday. And I asked him, I was like, what made you get me this palette, you know? And he was like, oh, well, I saw some good reviews on YouTube and I know that you've mentioned her before. To be clear, my husband does not watch my channel. He's not subscribed to my channel. He couldn't care less. So basically what likely happened was, is he heard me mention her name, like talking about drama, like a video I'm going to do or something. And he just assumed. So um, I must say that I did swatch this sequin shade here and it was like velvet. I'm not a fan of Tati, but this feels luxurious, although it's a little awkward. It's a little big. But I love the color story, and I'm most excited about this row here. Um, so I think I'm going to try a glitter, definitely a matte, probably two mattes. Um, and oh, I wish my hair was black again. Um, I don't know. The black, like the dark shadows just like really popped when I had dark hair. <laughs> but I'm going to try that out. Um, I think, although I did swatch this shade last night, and oh my God, was it stunning. Um, so I don't know, but I'm going to put on some powder because I've never used it on my eyes and I don't know if we're going to get any fallout. So let's talk Nick Snyder. I, um, subscribed to Nick back when he had about 2000, maybe a little, um, more than 2000 subscribers. I loved his live streams. Um, he's one of the few people I could watch eat because he kind of like covers his mouth and I think it's kind of cute. Um, but it's just a pet peeve of mine. I can't watch people eat. There's just something about it. Um, and um, but with him, it was cool, and he would live stream for, like, hours and kind of be messy and extra, but, like, in a fun, kind of shady type of way, but nothing very um, malicious, you know? And so I really enjoyed his content for a very long time, and, like, with Rich, I sort of stopped. I think I'm going to lay um, this really light shade down first. Um, I really started to notice a difference when he was doing collabs and stuff. And I don't know, like I said in my Rich video, I'm not saying it's Nick or Rich's fault, but the energy in those collabs, it just, it just was off. Like at first I liked them and then I was like, I don't know. There's just something about it and it felt like a little bit more mean you know, and I think that Nick, um, lately has been super messy. Now I'm going to start with, um, some things that I liked about him. Now, one of the reasons why I was so open about doing, um, like a video about my issues with like sobriety and stuff like that is because he was so open about it. And I really respected that. And I thought it was gutsy and, you know, you don't want to always put things out there, especially on the internet of all places, you know, so it can be a little scary. And he was the reason why, like, I felt, confident and comfortable to you know talk about things like that um and he says you know that there are certain things that shouldn't be talked about when doing videos on people um and that being like addiction sobriety stuff like that like that's low like that should not be a topic of discussion and I couldn't agree more however I remember him bringing up um, John Hill's issues when Jacqueline and John were going through their separation and divorce. I remember that. And a few friends of mine remember, although I cannot find the exact video or tweets, I know that he mentioned it. Even if it was just a mention and it wasn't like about it, I know that he mentioned it. 
And recently there was a tweet where he, I don't know who it was towards, but he had put sniff sniff in it. And I'm like, why is he doing this? I thought that something like that was off limits or is it only off limits when it comes to him because when you put something like your history like that out there people are going to talk about it people are going you know to have commentary on it whether you like it or not like it's the internet you know and although yes i think it should be off limits um you can't say it's off limits but then do that exact thing um he also had accused um T by Ali of um, using sobriety and things like that as like a tool. And I know what he means, like the tweet and everything. But uh, although I totally see where he's coming from, I'm also like, but you've made videos in the thick of drama about relapsing, which I 100% believe happened to him. I do not want to believe that he would make up something like so incredibly just heart-wrenching as you know faking something like a relapse like that would just devastate me and i don't think he did i don't know that it happened when he said that it happened because everything when things just feel shady they sometimes are and right in the thick of all of this drama all this stuff is happening to him and i just find it a little i don't know convenient it, although i hate to say that like i said this black is like really good um i hate to say that because you know i have my own personal issues with stuff like that so i would never want to assume that somebody would use that but if she was using it as a tool and you make videos on it and you are sort of like appearing like implying that you were going through a really rough time and that may be why you were acting that way isn't that using it as a tool and as an excuse too um, let me know what you think about that. Um, although I do understand because there have been plenty of times when like I have gone to like see, you know, like visit family or, um, I've had like a really bad day and I have felt that urge and you just tweet it or you say it like, oh, I just wish I could have a drink right now or something. Um, I don't think that that's a bad thing. I mean, it's Twitter. Like, that's what happens. Like, you just shoot off the mouth sometimes. So a lot of times, I totally give him a pass for stuff, you know? Because I'm like, oh, you know, I understand not everybody thinks before they tweet, you know? Um, but things have been getting a little bit more messy. Um, now, one thing that really sort of irked me was when he had tweeted about Manny MUA's dad and he put reformed homophobe. Um, he explained in a video that he uses or he had been using quotations often in his like tweets and stuff and that you know it wasn't meant to be that way there's no way you accidentally put quotations around that specific word you know what i mean just own it you know like you were ticked off and that's how you feel because you know a lot of people don't really change and what are you know manny's dad's motives for changing whatever is what i think he was thinking um so i don't know that like that really got me the whole sniff sniff tweet like that really bothered me and listen i'm not offended and i'm not ever easily offended and i am of the mindset that if you don't like somebody's content there's millions of channels to watch you know it's just when you feel like you you kind of you know get like a connection to people sometimes when you watch them a lot and let me just say that any very few minimum interactions i've ever had with him have been great like he has never been anything but absolutely uh sweet nice you know really really great so i can't say i have any like you know deep personal issues with him I just think that all of this stuff is kind of a little too convenient when you're in the middle of drama all this stuff happens and then he gets a puppy and it's not just any puppy it's the same exact dog that he used to have um almost identical which just seems a little bit weird to me like why would you want to that closely replace something I don't know let me know what you guys think 
but I found it kind of odd because yes, he's like in recovery. And yes, I, I do believe, yes, having that sense of responsibility could be great for him, could could motivate him um, to stay clean and take care of a dog. Although I know what those vendors would be like um, when I go off the wagon. And I have a dog that is 62 pounds of absolute ball of energy. Um, in total, we do like two hours of walks a day. We play about five or six times a day. I mean, he's a border collie mix and he just wants to go, go, go. And I know that if I, you know, drink a few days in a row or something, I am lagging trying to take care of him because I'm not like I can't. It's just, you know, you feel like crap when you like drink and stuff, you know? And so I know that if you do relapse, you know, if something happens, it's hard, you know, especially with a brand new puppy. And he named the puppy Birkin, which is like pretty much as pretentious as he is. And I, um, I love this shade. I don't know. I'll have to take a picture so you guys can like more closely see this glitter, this sparkle. It is intense <laughs> and I really like it. Um, but anyway, and I'm also a person that is all about rescue dogs. Um, go to a shelter, rescue an animal, you know, um, you know, don't go to a breeder, you know what I mean? Although I also understand that, you know, you may want a certain breed of dog that fits with your lifestyle. Like if you live in an apartment, maybe you can only have a small dog. If, you know, you're have like a low energy lifestyle, if you're always traveling, whatever it may be. So I can kind of see why it's just kind of weird to me that he wanted to get a dog that looked exactly like another dog. And what happened to Bentley? And did he ever end up doing a video with all the animals? Because I know that he said he was going to, but I don't know if that happened. So let me know, um, because I actually haven't been watching him too much lately because I just, I, I've just been pretty disappointed, you know, and thanks to a friend of mine that Rich Lux, like I'm not friends with Rich or whatever was like clickbait, I guess anyway. And I hate that. And he's also another one that does all these videos about why he's not friends with people and, um, acts like, oh, I didn't monetize this. So that means that I'm sincere and it means I care because it's not about this. It's not about that, but it's still going to get views. You know, like I said in my other video, it still benefits somebody, you know, it still is going to benefit you, even if you're not monetizing it. So, you know, that means nothing to me that it's not monetized. Um, another thing I find kind of interesting is that um, I feel like if, let me see if I can get this to match the other side, because I'm not very good at that. Um, I'm taking this... Um, black just like sort of in the mostly outer corner here okay so my thing is is that I think that let's say Jacqueline Hill's in the middle of all of this drama and what happens is is she says that you know something serious happened she was in the hospital all this stuff would everybody just believe her or would you want receipts? Because everybody was just believing Nick, not really knowing. And I, I don't think that he, I'm not saying he has to prove that, but I feel like if it were an influencer like a Jaclyn Hill that did something like that, people would want to see proof that she was in the hospital. They would want to see proof of like recovery and things like that. So I don't know. It's a little weird to me. Um, a Band-Aid and a cotton ball. Those are things that you can get at Rite Aid. Like, I don't know. I just, and it feels, and I feel really bad saying like, I don't know if he exaggerated or made up or waited to use this like as an excuse because it's just so awful. But you know, you don't want to think that. And then you see people like I'm J station and you're like, what people will do, you know, to eat, to get out of drama or get themselves in it or, you know, get views. It's just, I don't know. It's just ridiculous to me. I have to say my first use of this palette. I love this black. I think it's one of the best blacks I have ever used. Um, I love the glitter. Um, it's not like falling, you know, there's not like a ton of fallout from it. Um, it feels like it's very secure there. Um, I I, okay, Tati, you got me. I am, I'm impressed thus far. So 
Um, another thing that also, you know, bothered me a little bit is, well, like I said, you know, um, if it were anybody else, I think that people would want the proof that it happened. Um, and I think he would be one of those people. Like if something like that, you know, was said by an influencer that he doesn't like, like Jaclyn Hill, he would be like, oh, show us the receipts. You know what I mean? And like I said, I haven't really watched him much since I think it was when he introduced Birkin. Um, so if if he did show some proof or if I'm missing something, please fill me in. Um, I'm just, oh, I'm just so disappointed in his attitude. He's just been like so messy, you know? And um, there was one tweet that he had where he had said something along the lines of, I almost tweeted something really messy and problematic. Does this mean I'm growing? No. No, it doesn't mean that you're growing. What it means is that you are still messy and problematic and you're tweeting about it. So then therefore everybody wanted to know what you were going to say. So you got a bunch of attention from it. That is not that's not a sign of growth in somebody's character, you know? And it just made me think like this is just ridiculous. Like, maybe you're not as self-aware as you think you are, you know? Um, just saying. I mean, who would do that? That's like, ugh, that's just asking for people to be like, who were you going to talk about? What were you going to say? Oh, my God. You know? Um, no, because it just shows that you were ready to tweet something messy and problematic. Like, it's just ridiculous to me. <laughs> yes, I have notes. <laughs> um but, you know, there, I, I'm disappointed because I really like Nick, but I find him messy. I think that he's like super hypocritical and I don't, I just don't, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to him is basically what I'm saying. Um, I really miss the way he used to be. I don't think he is as self-aware as he thinks he is. And, you know, there's a lot of things where um when people are not friends anymore or there's like somebody in the group I feel like Nick is sort of a constant in a lot of the drama and a lot of the times I have seen other channels act differently it seemed to be because of Nick like he's like the ultimate mean girl and listen, this is coming from somebody that liked him for so many years and stuck up for him whenever um, that one girl, I think it was Earth Muva or Muva, I forget. I'm really sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I left this huge comment on her video, like defending Nick, um, you know, and all this stuff. But I, I can't defend somebody that behaves that way. And after that sniff sniff tweet, um, I think he private uh, privated his uh, Twitter it's just like, why are you being so messy, you know? Um, and then he acts like he doesn't like the drama. He's another one, like a Gabby Hanna. And I know how much he dislikes her, and I hate to compare them. But you can't keep saying that you hate the drama and start it. And you know that he goes off on Twitter because it starts drama. Um, he's one of the people that will always at influencers, almost like kind of baiting them, you know, uh, into something that he can make a video from. Um, I find him hypocritical right now. I'm disappointed in him. Um, I don't cancel people. I just don't watch them anymore. And that's what I've been doing right now. I just haven't been watching Nick anymore. Um, I miss him. I don't find him sincere. I feel like he's changed a lot and he really has this influencer type ego and it's quite disappointing. So, I mean, everything from the Manny thing and acting like you just randomly use quotations to saying that some things are off limits, but you can talk about them. You know, I'm just, I'm kind of done with him for right now. So you guys let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you in the next video. Love and hugs. Bye.